my video today is aimed towards people that been living in the city. They bought some acres in the country, and they moving back out into the agrarian lifestyle. What's happened is you you and your spousal unit have been wandering around out on the on your new property, and and that it's all exciting. And about the first thing that comes up is. Oh, we could have fresh milk, or we could have fresh eggs. We could raise our own critters. And the second you did that, the next question is, what kind of fences are we going to have to have? Because if you got cows, you got to have one kind of fence, and you got chickens, you need another kind of fence. Are we fencing something in? Are we fencing stuff out? So the whole idea of fences starts because you see, it seems kind of simple, but you want your critters running on your acres. And you don't want other people's critters running on your acres. So we have this thing about how do we get the fences up and just right. Well, congratulations on making the decision to move to the country. And welcome to the world of agriculture, complete with its rewards. But it also comes with its challenges. So I want to talk about fences today because that's kind of where my heart's at. And we've been doing fences since I've been able to walk. We've been, been wrestling with fences. So I want to talk about that. And it's important that we talk from the base of what do you want to accomplish with your fence. I mean, if you got the property, it needs to probably be fenced or we're going to have problems because good fences tend to make good neighbors. You got bad fences, you're going to have trouble and you're going to have heartburn right away. So let's get the let's get the fences squared off to start with. So what the questions that we got to start with are pretty simple. What are you fencing? You fencing stuff in or you fencing stuff out? Well, you want to fence your cows in, but you probably want to fence the deer out. You want to fence your dogs in, but I don't know what else you might be fencing. But let's agree on what you want to fence first. Maybe you just want a border fence. A border fence, and that's fine, just defines the property. That's a whole different ballgame right there. In the state of Montana, just an interesting anecdote because that's where I'm from is the state of Montana. In the, orig in the originally, when we Oh, 150 years ago, there were no fences, and the fences just kind of eased in. But when the fences were first showed up, the cattlemen owned the the uh, empire, and the cattlemen owned uh, the legislature. They were they were the legislators, and the rules showed up that if you had cows, that the other people that your neighbors had to fence your cows out if they didn't want your the, your cows on their property, they had to fence them out. But if it was sheep you had to fence your sheep in. So sheep and hogs had to be fenced in, cattle and horses had to be fenced out. Now that's kind of maybe changed over the years, but that's the way it was. And the whole rules of fencing have changed and modified over the years. So it's just kind of a fun story. Now today, so let's say that you, you want to do cattle. Well, if you've got cattle, you don't need a big heavy duty fence, but you need a good solid fence. Maybe you need a four wire bar board fence, maybe five. But you can do that pretty easily. Oh, we got the cat's claw just showed up. How about that? We got because when you build your fence, obviously you're going to have to have wire, you're going to have to have posts, you've got to have gates, you've got to have bracing. So, what are you building for? Now, <clears throat> if you're building to keep the deer out, you're going to have to have a real tall fence because those son of a guns will jump, uh, jump over the moon. I'm sure it's going to have to be six or eight feet high. And you're going to have to have a lot of, and the posts are going to be real tall. Uh, people, I see people fencing their marijuana farms and fencing people out of the marijuana farms. Well, that's a different fence than for cattle. So decide what kind of a critter you're going to start with. So, in general, barbed wire is what we tend to work with, but it certainly doesn't have to be what you're working with. If you want to use a wood fence, great, use a wood fence. But get the right fence to fit your critters. So don't just start fencing until you decide what you're fencing in, what you're fencing out, uh, and what you actually need. Uh, the, if we're going to do cattle, barbed wire fence works fine. If you're going to do dogs, well, you're going to have to have barbed wire obviously isn't going to get the job done. You're going to have to have some sort of a dog run or something on that order. If you've got deer, you've got to have a big, tall fence, a, a woven wire fence. So let's decide what we've got first, and then we'll decide how to fix it. Obviously, I've, cat's claw is... is my preference. If you've got wood posts involved with this, you've got to hang wire on wood posts. The cat's claws just make your job so much easier than beating staples in there that tend to fall back out. So uh, let's call that a wrap for today. And there's just a lot of difference in fences. Decide how much you're going to spend on it. A lot of ways to go at it. Uh, some a lot harder, some a lot easier. But decide what you're doing first, and then we'll decide what fence to build.